I'd like to uh, start our next session um, by introducing our guest speaker, Caitlin Sargent. So, Caitlin is a double Australian National Opens champion in the 400 metre sprint and also recently represented Australia at the Commonwealth Games in, in Glasgow uh, in the 4 by 400 metre relay. She's also competed at three world championships and junior world champs. Michael Ridgway will interview Caitlin to reveal how RM has contributed to her success. Please welcome Caitlin and Michael to the stage. I think I've got to go over here. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much for joining us in your personal representation today as an athlete, Caitlin. Thank you for having me. It's exciting to be able to tell my story to the delegates here today. Um, I would like to share, uh, say thank you to my best training partner, my Bassett Ham Bonnie. Despite Chris and Peter's best efforts yesterday afternoon, Bonnie is still my best training partner. <laughs> <laughs> now, Caitlin, I know that something happened to you when you, uh, I'd say, in your earlier years. You're about 15 years old. You've been doing very well at uh, sprinting, 100, 200, 400 metres, for multiple years already but then something happened when you were 15. Can you tell us about that? So at 15, I was um, a national age group medalist in the 200 and the 400. Um, and then I started to develop some hamstring pain. I hadn't ever been injured before, so I wasn't really sure what was going on to start with. I was like, oh, that's a bit sore. Just keep running. Um, and after a few weeks, I went, actually, I think I might be injured. Um, so I tried resting it, didn't really make any difference. Um, tried some physio, didn't really make any difference, had some massage, acupuncture, tried a few different physios, did get some help along the way, uh, but nothing that really got me to 100%. And what sort of concerns did you have back then? I suppose for me the main thing was um, just the longer I had um, away from it, good training block, so the longer I went without having good training behind me, uh, it became quite evident in my com competition results. So going from a national medalist to barely scraping a state championship final was pretty disappointing. Um, and I just didn't feel like I could see a way out of it. So we were resting, we were trying all these things and nothing seemed to really be working. So just the frustration of, you know, when will it end? Where are we going with this? Um, and just, you know, wanting to get back to, the, to where I had been competition wise. And then something special happened. <laughs> Where am I leading to here? <laughs> you tried RM. Yes, I did. Um, so pretty quickly, I could see my hamstring range, strength, all those things improving. Um, and more than that, I could s one, I could see that we were making changes rather than just randomly trying things. And two, I could see there was a plan and I could see where we were going, which was the most important thing for me at that point. Perfect, thank you. Ah, so now, what, what happened? We solved? Yeah, we've solved the condition. Yep. And can you share with everyone what your PCF is and was for that condition? Uh, T9. A T9 release, a glide to the right. Yes. That's what I remember it as. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I was 15 at the time, so I can't remember which direction. <laughs> so, look, look, look. Has everyone got that? Can we recap on that? Can we paraphrase it? What am I talking about? So we did a T9, I did a T9 glide on you. And what did that do for you? Full hamstring range, full hamstring strength, everything moving well, injury free. In a long period of time, a short period of time? Do you remember? I, I reviewed the notes before we came. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the exact period of time, but given it had been 12 months already, it was definitely a much shorter period of time than that. <laughs> it was, it was a few weeks. Okay, we got that. <laughs> and um, tell me what you thought about all of the hamstring rehab we did, you know, the massaging, the hammy strength work, all of the standard stuff like that. Tell me all about that. I really enjoyed it because there was none of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for confirming. <laughs> Talk us through, please. Show us what we're talking about. What was happening and what wasn't going right for you? And then what changed after RM? Show us that. So first photo is actually one of the times I came back <clears throat> from resting. You'll see thoracic hyperextension, poor pelvic lateral control, um, and also just not very good running technique in general. <laughs> Um, second photo, I had 
begun RM training, but obviously still just not very good with my motor control. So still a lot of thoracic hyperextension um, running straight out the back, so not very efficient. This is, you can even see my lovely motor control taping on at training. So better thoracic position, better stride, more efficient. And then this is nationals last year. So really nice thoracic position, really efficient stride pattern. So better running and less injuries. Thank you. We have to look at what else you had to work on. I like, I like that you could show there that, that taping. Could everyone see that sort of anterior taping for preventing thoracic hyperactive active hyperextension there? So you worked on that type of motor control for preventing re-aggravation of your T9. What else had to change for you to prevent re-aggravation? Let's have a look at some other strategy. Let's, you, you talk us through this. Uh, so my breathing. I actually distinctly recall Michael saying when he's still having trouble with your posture and I said, when I run 500 metre reps, and he said, well, why? I said, because I can't breathe, Michael. So um, I just, <laughs> so I had to work on how I could breathe and keep my thoracic in a really nice neutral position. So, so this is how I was breathing before. So you'll see um, thoracic hyperextension, but also quite an apical AP pattern, which is not very efficient. And then we did some retraining. So you'll see keeping thoracic in neutral and also a better bibasal expansion pattern, so more efficient respiration as well, which is what I need at the end of a 400. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me something that is different that you don't like about RMK. Probably not so much. RM on its own. Um, also when I travel away with the Australian team, team coaches get very distressed that I don't need physio every day, um, that I'm not strapped together with chicken wire and chewing gum. Um, and if I do need physio, um, it's quite difficult to explain that I'd like my T9 released for my hamstring. Another thing, so, so it does make you stand out as different. What happened uh, a few months ago, you told me a story. You had a race on in Perth, another national type of meet, and um, you flew to Perth that morning, you raced, you won that race, and then you flew home again. And what, what's the repercussions of that? What does that make you stand out like uh, in athletics uh, circles? Yeah, um, I got a few names thrown at me for that one. Um, I think most people flew either the day before or two days before and were still feeling pretty stiff and tight coming off the plane. So they were going like, how did you do that? And you were like, "Won? like, what is going on? Um, and I just have to say, oh, it's just, it's just my secrets. <laughs> Very nice. Let's go back to when you were 17. At high school, figuring out what you wanted to do for you, at university. Uh, so what influenced your choice then? So I knew I wanted to help people. Um, I've got kind of a health background in my family, so I wanted to get into some, somewhere along those lines. I had at one point thought about physio. I'd heard some horror stories about really unmotivated, disinterested clients um, making it not a, not a very fun job. So I kind of veered away from that, thought about a few other things. And then through my involvement with RM and with Michael, um, I could see that if you're enthusiastic and you're energetic, your clients will match that. Um, and so if, you, if I brought that same passion to my job, then my clients would have that and it would be an enjoyable and fun career. Perfect. Then what happened? So you did get into physiotherapy, well done, and uh, then graduated physiotherapy, and talk us through what were your influences after that? So having gone into physio um, with the knowledge of RM, I'd always knew I wanted to at some point end up working in an RM clinic. So it was just a matter of seeing what my options were after graduating. Um, and just over 12 months ago, opportunity opened up at Barona. Um, and here I am now. And very fortuitous. <laughs> a win-win for all. So let's go back now and have a look. We'll talk sport again. I've got a question for you. So how many female sprinters, 400 meter sprinters, have been more successful, or as successful as you in the history of Australia? Uh, one or two? <laughs> I know of one. I know of one anyway. In your trajectory, as you've been coming up through junior ranks, um, your trajectory has been beaten by only one person so far. 
Who would hazard a guess at her name? Kathy Freeman. Kathy Freeman. You're right, exactly. So, how does it feel to be uh, in the same sort of uh, spoken with in the same sentence as Kathy Freeman? I've actually just got goosebumps and tingles. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's something else that you've done recently that's uh, been a standout as well. So tell us a bit about that. You know, how many years has it been since uh, 400 metre female has represented Australia at the World Champs? Uh, so yeah, in 2013, I competed at World Championships and I was the first female to compete for Australia in 12 years. Since Cathy Freeman? Since? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. See, I know, I know some of my facts. <laughs> now, let's have a look at a race. Everyone ready for it? It's the 2013 Australian National Championships. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and tell me what you said when we were running through practicing this as you saw yourself coming down the final straight. I still get really nervous watching myself race. And as I watch that and I go, oh, I hope I win. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got lined up next? What's happening? Well, two weekends ago, um, we the Australian 4x4 team went to the Bahamas. It's a pretty tough life. And we came seventh at the World Relay Championship, so we've qualified ourselves for the Rio Olympics next year. How beautiful is that? Well done. Thank you so much for telling us all about that, Caitlin. It's just fantastic. You've been a, a champion, a star client, a star client, a star representative of RM. Thank you very much.